the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the brethren that have their Bibles to open the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. We're going to read a verse from this chapter. I was thinking that I was not going to preach this message, but the Lord told me to preach it. Preach it. The Lord has told me expressly to preach about this. So then take advantage because the Lord wants to use to visit your life tonight. The Holy Spirit is amongst us. He's already moving to bring you the blessing that you came wishing for. Verses 21. Acts 2, verse 21. Only this verse. Is it in the projection here? Only 21, right? Amen. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can the church read with me, repeating this verse, together with me. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Glory to, to the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. We praise the Lord, your own holy name. I ask you that your blessing may be determined in the measure of your necessity. What we came needing for the reason why we came to your house lord speak with us bless us in the meditation of your word we pray in the name of jesus amen the church may be seated and it shall pass that whoever called the name of the lord will be saved this is the type of message that we if possible, we may never forget. We'll leave work. Speaking about a verse. If I call the name of the Lord, He will save me. If I call the name of the Lord, He will save me. Amen. Step a verse that involves what is of the most precious in our lives, which is salvation. What is we concern the most and we, what we desire the Lord the most, which is salvation. We're speaking about salvation of the soul. We're also speaking about salvation from the necessities of this life. The Lord knows your need. The Lord knows my need. Do not, the Lord knows exactly how we arrived here, including the Lord has shown about a woman that is here with us, a lady. Is, is going through a great battle, great trial in her life, and she came here desperate, uh, is asking for help from the Lord. My sister, the Lord has already sent the help. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But is it only on the left of this woman the Lord showed in a spiritual gift? No, the Lord is operating, has shown the Holy Spirit operating amongst us. If you came asking for salvation, today is a night, tonight is a night of salvation. God's going to save you because you, you're going to call the name of the Lord and you're going to find the resource that you need. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Walking with Jesus surely was something that must have been amazing during the uh, ministry of Jesus. And it's important to highlight that the Holy Spirit in this verse that we just read the Holy Spirit brought all the way from the Old Testament from Prophet Joel, a prophecy that's been fulfilled in our days, which was the moment of the change, moment in which the Holy Spirit was being poured out upon the church. And this verse, this promise is for our days. The Holy Spirit had the care to extract from the old pact and insert it in the times of the church, in our life and my life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because this promise came to us in this place. If I'm going too fast, you can you can make a sign that, that I can slow down. 
This care was to show that the ministry of the Lord Jesus has been uh, finished uh, upon the earth as man has been fulfilled, but the action, his action was going to remain in us and his promises were going to be renewed and they were going to be inserted in the life of the church inside of each one of us. We know that the Lord operates in this way. We can take the example of the Lord Jesus, which is who is the be best example of the preacher of the word. I always say this on the church that I take care of. I always speak about this. The best example that you have in the Bible for anything is the Lord Jesus. Right? Particularly, I like to mention the Lord Jesus because he is the greatest example for the best things in our lives. Jesus operated this salvation that we are speaking about here in the life of the, his disciples and all of those that sought his presence. We have in the Bible registered many events like this. Remember the woman that had a flow of blood? We can also remember Jairus. We have so many others that went to Jesus, some only to see Jesus. But the Bible also speaks of others that were placed at the shadow of Jesus. And as the shadow of Jesus went over them, they received blessings, of cures, deliverance, and victories in their lives. Only the shadow of Jesus. So difficult, right? Your sh does your shadow cure infirmity? I can tell you here that it can. And you will see that it can. Peter of the disciples of Jesus, Peter is the one that we most associate with because he's probably a difficult person and everybody thinks that they are difficult. Uh, they, you usually say, oh, I'm a complicated person. And you never hear somebody saying that they're a good person. If they say they're a good person, there's something wrong. And Peter was like that. Peter was hasty. And maybe because of that, he had lived deep experiences related to this salvation with the Lord Jesus. He needed to sh be shaped in a special way, in the same way that he needed to be shaped, in the same way that you need to be shaped. But the Lord always has been able, has been at the reach of Peter. And the salvation that we're speaking about, if you call the name of the Lord, he will save you, was upon the life of the Lord Jesus. And Peter learned this in an amazing way. I pinched here three examples in the life of Peter that we're going to see here tonight. And you see that at, at the end of the day, you will realize that you are just like Peter. You have, yes, the possibility that the salvation be generated in a mighty way in your life. Peter, once he was in a boat with his uh, friends as an order of Jesus. Jesus gave them an order, pass to the other side because I'm going to pray and then you uh, move forward in the, the trip. Go ahead of me. And when the storm arrived and everybody, I think that everybody knows this passage in the Bible, came a storm, probably unexpected. If they know that, knew that the storm was coming, they would not have entered into the waters. And that storm, unexpected storm shook the life of everyone there and when they saw the Lord Jesus walking over the waters and at the first instance the fear that they had what did they have in the midst of the storm they had fear in their hearts the fear was prevailing in their lives fear was defeating their lives at that moment so then it was the sign of defeat in their lives was fear. The fear didn't cause the defeat. The fear was a sign of their defeat. So then their eyes, when they see, they see Jesus. And their fear went up. It's a ghost. What is this? And it got worse. So then Jesus said, everything's all right. It's me. I'm here. And I'm going to calm down everything. And Jesus calmed down everything. 
everything. Storm, seas, the wind. And Peter said, But Lord, if it is, if it is you, then call me so I can go be with you on the waters. Then Jesus said, Come, Peter. You want to come? Come. And what Peter, Peter didn't expect was that the word of the Lord would have the power to maintain him over the waters. He, uh, maybe I think that he didn't expect it. He started stepping on the water, firm, felt it firm, and started walking toward Jesus. But then his eyes started turning around, and he began to look at the storm. And when he began to look at the storm, instead of looking at Jesus, he began to sink. And the faith, the feet that he had when he was looking at Jesus, he began to vanish because he began to look at the affliction, uh, at the trial. And the Bible says that at that moment, what he say, what he did do, who knows what he did? What he pleaded, right? Lord, help me, save me, Lord. And then Jesus extended his hand and uh, raised him up. And what we learn from the text here, specifically about this passage, that in spite of the fact that he had turned his eyes from Jesus and the trial that he was going through, Jesus was at our arm's length from him. And Jesus extended his hand to him. Maybe he had not realized that he had this perception. Maybe he had not understood that the hand of Jesus was to save and that Jesus was so close to him that there was going to be no ocean that would uh, swallow him that day. And this is the first experience that we need to mention about Peter. Jesus brought him back to the boat and showed him what was salvation. Peter, salvation is when you were sinking, when you don't have hope and the problems are greater than you. My, my hand, I extend to you and take you from where you are. This is salvation. You learned, right? He learned, right? Peter learned things very quickly. So then Jesus brought him back to the boat. Your place in the boat. Your place is in the church. Your place is in the midst of the people of the Lord. Your place is where the Lord is acting and is operating and where God gives you the security. Your place is here and that's my place as well. The second moment, Peter. This one a little more sad. Jesus had gone to prison, had been imprisoned, and Peter decided to sit down near the fire, which was not the fire of the Lord. It was a fire made by the mockers. And he fulfilled in his life what was on Psalm Yun. And he sat on the circle of the ones that were mocking. And at that moment was the second moment in which He had the second experience about his salvation because as he denied Jesus, it was fulfilling prophecy a, a very short term that Jesus had made for his life saying, when Jesus said, today still before the rooster sings, Cox, you will deny me three times. No, Ronildo may deny me, deny you, but no, I'm not good. I don't know about Ronildo, but me? I will never deny you, Jesus. And Jesus said, you will. And he denied the Lord Jesus. And when he denied the Lord Jesus, you heard the, the rooster, the cock of the rooster. So then his life crumbled. As that moment when the person realizes the weight of sin, the weight of letting go of salvation from Jesus, the weight of having left the cares of the life and what was surrounding going away from the Lord in such a way that would no longer have fellowship with the Lord. For Peter, I believe that in that moment, it was again, he had already lost himself. Once again, he had lost uh, fellowship and salvation that he had cultivated for three years beside Jesus. And sometimes you, some, some of us may have been 
walking with the Lord for a while and the cares of this world surround us and the fire that is not uh, holy fire not a fire of the Holy Spirit that is burning our hearts today but it's a, a foreign fire a fire from outside sometimes we are there and when man sins and when man uses the word is in his lips he goes away from the Lord and Peter needed salvation from the Lord once again have you felt that you need to renew your salvation once again in your life that was Peter's turn and when Peter turns his eyes up once again Peter Peter's eyes found Jesus' eyes and the eyes of Jesus were never uh, Jesus gaze was never a gaze of reproach Jesus never gazed upon his own with uh, an eye of reproach even the one that betrayed Jesus he called him a friend and he finds that gaze and he was able to see that Jesus was not far away from him that he was in that situation was in that trial in that struggle but Jesus was not far away from him Jesus was at a distance distance of a, a gaze and one gaze of Jesus changed everything and Peter could no longer hold it in he went away and that day was he felt great insecurity and the Lord Jesus said in their gaze to Peter we cannot say the Bible doesn't describe it but I can tell you that Jesus was speaking with Peter with that gaze Peter that's not your place your place is not around the ones that are mocking me you, your place is not the place where amongst those that are crucified Lord Jesus the ones that re reject the word, word of salvation the ones that re reject the sacrifice of, and the blood of Jesus this is not your place Peter this is not your place your place is another leave this place Peter and now bringing this message to a close the third moment in which Peter had a great experience with was when in the Sea of Tiberias when Jesus resurrected and went to meet him so in the first moment Peter had a fear and the second he had insecurity and the this in this day it was disillusionment because of everything that had gone happened Jesus had died had been buried he had died denied Jesus yet every reason in the world to have disillusionment in his life and I believe that every one of us have gone through this at least once in our lives in which we feel completely discouraged disillusioned and who appeared on this on the shore that day was Jesus Jesus was alive and he is alive and the distance of Jesus from Peter and the disciples was the, the distance of the sound of his voice and Jesus spoke to his disciples it was, it was unnecessary for him to shout he didn't have to make signs with the hands he just needed to speak to his disciples and that word of the Lord Jesus changed everything at that very moment so your distance may be may how, whatever it is from the Lord you are very close to the Lord Jesus who will not allow you to sink he will not allow you to be uh, around those that mock Jesus and he's not going to look at you with a gaze of accusation because he's the one that forgives he's the one that carried upon himself all the sacrifice described in the book of Levit Leviticus all of them were upon the life of Jesus sacrifice of forgiveness all sacrifices they were all upon Jesus and that's what Peter needed to understand and my brethren today we need to understand that salvation of the Lord is very close to our lives and we whatever the situation we may be going through we may plead to the Lord because wherever call upon the name of the Lord will be saved we may be seeking call the name of the Lord 
you are disillusioned, call the name of the Lord. If you're sad, call the name of the Lord, and He will save you. He will show you the worth of salvation in your life. He sh will show you the worth of salvation in your home. The project in the life of Peter was much greater than Peter could ever imagine. Then we're going to go back to the first observation that I said. When Jesus met Peter and dealt with the topics uh, on sh near the Sea of Tiberias, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? And the third time, Peter said, Jesus, Lord, you know all things. And that was the position, the prophecy of the knowing everything. The word of the Lord above all things. He knows all things. This life of dependency, that was the position of the, the servant. That's the position the Lord was expecting from Peter. So then Jesus said, go take care of my flock. Now you go and save lives. You're going to have a life very different than you, the one you had up until this point. That was his experience and that, that's your experience. The Bible says that when Pe Peter preached, almost 3,000 lives were saved. Almost 5,000 lives were saved. It was a message of a simple fisherman, but it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking through him. And it's the same Holy Spirit that's speaking with us tonight. And Peter had the opportunity to live the same experiences, right? And regarding cure. Remember when I spoke about cure of the shadow? Yep, there very well. The shadow of Peter also cured. People were waiting on the side, on the road, and when Peter passed by, his shadow cured. The Spirit of God, the Son of Just, when it shines upon your life, your shadow will, will cure it. Your testimony, whatever you place your feet, salvation will be with you and will be generated in the life of many others in your home. You want a victory in your home? If the Son of Justice is upon you, if the Word, the salvation of the Lord Jesus is upon your life, in your home, there will be cure, deliverance, and salvation. May the Lord bless us. Let us stand up. We're going to sing a song to the Lord.
Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to our God. Only our God is worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Only the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. We're going to have a word of adoration to the name of our God. We want to praise Him. Only your God. We, we everything that we have to you, Lord. Tonight we open up our lips. We say that we love you. Because you died to save us. We're thankful, Lord, for this. We're not deserving of such great blessing. You loved us first. Such a great love. You have taken care of us every day. We have not lacked anything. We surrender to you all our gratitude. We'd open up our lips to say glory and hallelujahs. Because only you are worthy of our, all the honor. We praise the Lord with all our heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Receive, Lord, our praise, uh, our, our adoration. And that you may take us home in peace and under your hands and that the day tomorrow may be a blessed day and they are teaching teaching your word may remain in our hearts and our lips uh, families Lord our lives may be strengthened in the Lord this is the prayer we say in the name of Jesus Amen in your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God our eternal Father the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, gift of the Holy Spirit, be poured out upon us, now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. If somebody desire a prayer, an assistance, just raise your hand. I'd like to remind the brethren that tomorrow we're not going to have our Sunday school. Because you are going to have a, a mini seminar there in the Church of Hollandale, beginning at 8 o'clock in the morning. Be prepared. If you need a, a ride information, address, just look for us. Peace of the Lord.